further trick identities and their applications, expressing sums and differences of sines and cosines as products of sines and cosines by using the factor formula. And here they are. Sine P plus sine Q is 2. Sine P plus Q over 2 cos P minus Q over 2. Sine P minus sine Q is 2 cos P plus Q over 2 sine P minus Q over 2. Cos P plus cos Q is 2 cos P plus Q over 2 cos P minus Q over 2. And cos P minus cos Q equals minus 2 sine P plus Q over 2 sine P minus Q over 2. And obviously for the A for C3, you have to memorize all of those. No, you don't. That's a joke. They're given to you in the formula booklet. You just have to be able to use them. So let's show one of them using the formulas we saw in a previous video, sine A plus B, and the formulas were sine A minus B, derive the results that sine p plus q is 2 sine p plus q over 2 of course p minus q over 2. Right let's think of the, let's think of the addition formulas sine a plus b is sine a cos b plus cos a sine b and sine a minus b is sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. Well if we add the two sides together we get sine a plus b plus sine a minus b is 2 sine a cos b the cos a sine b's sort of cancel out there. So let's let a plus b be equal to p and let's a minus b be equal to q. So now we've got a plus b is p and a minus b is q. If we add those together, 2a is p plus q. Or alternatively, a is p plus q over 2. If we take one from the other, one take away two, 2b is p minus q, so dividing by 2, b is p minus q. And now we substitute those back into addition formula. a plus b is p, a minus b is q. a can also be written as p plus q over 2, and b can be written as p minus q over 2. So there we go, we've formed the factor formula by using the two addition formula and some simultaneous equations. And you could do the same thing for the other formulas if you so desired. Sumwise, we can do sums like this. Sine of 105 take away sine 15 equals one over root two. We need to show that. Obviously we could push the buttons on the calculator but that wouldn't win any prizes in, the, in an exam. So what do we do? Well, we think about the numbers 105 and 15. And we think about this formula, p plus q over 2, p minus q over 2. And then we think to ourselves, well, if p is 105 and q is 15, then that's the same as 2 cos 105 plus 15 over 2 sine 105 minus 15 over 2. Well, if you actually work those sums out, it means it's the same as 2 cos 60 sine 45. Luckily, we've memorized those. So we can sub in the values 2 times a half times 1 over root 2. Then we can simplify it to show it's the same as 1 over root 2. And it is that type of working out that you need to show in any exam answers. Solve in the range indicated sine 4 theta, sine 4 theta minus sine 3 theta is equal to zero. In the range naught to pi. Well, we can use the factor formula again to, to transform this from being two separate sine things being added or taken into something we can actually solve. So if we make p equals 4 theta and q equals to 3 theta and sub those values in, we can see that the sine 4 theta minus sine 3 theta is the same as 2 cos 7 theta over 2 times sine theta over 2. And that is equal to 0, which was the original question. 
So it's the product of two things being equal to zero. So either cos seven theta over two or sine theta over two must therefore be zero. Let's take one at a time. If cos seven theta over two is equal to zero, if we inverse cos it, then, well, we have to remember we've got a new range here. So the original range is naught to pi. Our new range is going to be naught to seven pi over two. So the inverse cos of zero is either at pi over two or three pi over two. But once we've got those, are there are any more, well yes, there's one at five pi over two, and also there's one at seven pi over two to get all of the answers in the range. Then we have to turn back to theta, so we times by two and divide by seven. So pi over seven, three pi over seven, five pi over seven, and pi. That again is the same method, slightly more complicated, but the same method that we used in C2. And the other solution is if sine pi over two is equal to zero, inverse sine it, again, new range, this time between naught and pi over two. Well, between naught and pi over two, there's only one solution, which is naught. And then we have to times it by two to get to turn it back to the correct range. Nothing times two is nothing. So there we get all of our answers from the cos and the sine part. Once we've used the factor theorem, the factor formula to turn it into a product. Prove that sine x plus two y plus sine x plus y plus sine x over cos x plus two y plus cos x plus y plus cos x is tan x plus y. Well, tan we know is sine over cos, so really we need to think, we, and we've got the sine x plus y and the cos x plus y in the question, so what we're hoping to do is, is essentially to make everything else vanish and then we're left. Uh, questions like this, it's always best to deal with the numerator and the denominator separately and then pull the answer back together at the end. So in the numerator, we've got sine x plus 2y plus sine x plus y plus sine x. Let's, let's for the time being, just forget about the sine x plus y bit. And we'll worry about that later. So we're left with sine x plus y, sine x plus 2y plus sine x. So using the identity of it for two sines, that's the same, so that sine p plus sine q, that's the same as subbing in the value. P is x plus 2y and q is x. x plus 2y plus x over 2 and cos x plus 2y minus x over 2. Which if we simplify them is sine x plus y cos y. Now if we bring back the sine x plus y we ignored earlier. We can now say we've got a common factor of sine x plus y. So we can factorise it sine x plus y times 2 cos y plus 1. That's the numerator sort of tidied up a bit. We don't quite know where we're going, but perhaps we'll try the same as the denominator and see what goes on there. Well, let's ignore the cos x plus y again, because we think that's going to be useful in finding tan x plus y. So we've got cos x plus 2y cos x, same process, identity with two cos, cos p plus cos q. Sub in the values, p is x plus 2y and q is x. So tidies up to be cos x plus y cos y. Two cos x plus y cos y. Let's um, pull back in the cos x plus y we ignored. We can see something similar is going on. We've got a common factor of cos x plus y. So it factorizes to be cos x plus y two cos y plus one. Well, now something as good has happened, because now if we rewrite it using our numerator and denominator, we can see that the two cos y plus one brackets cancel out. We're left with sine x plus y over cos x plus y, which is just tan x plus y from our memories of C2. So in the last four videos, 21, 22, 23, and 24, we've extended the range of techniques we have for solving trig equations. 
we've seen how to combine functions involving sine and cosine into a single transformation of sine or cosine, and we've learnt several new identities.